So guys, it should come as no surprise that leveling your expertise will give your agent a huge advantage in Tom Clancy's The Division 2, especially when it comes to Dark Zone PvP. Having a high expertise will most certainly get you through endgame content with ease and give you the edge over other players in the Dark Zone. But what is the most effective way to level it up? Well, you have a few options, and the determining factor of the option you choose may vary depending on your agent's current watch level, resources, etc. For example, if you are at a high watch level, maybe like 2000 or more, you may find it more efficient to create a new character and level them up to 40 through the Warlords of New York content. Once you complete this and return to the White House in Washington, you may come over to the crafting table and speak to Inaya Alkalik to claim your shared resources from your main character. So the idea behind this method is utilizing your watch level to attain printer filaments, which you can then use to donate and reach max proficiency on all your gear and weapons. Now, obviously, the higher your watch level, the more effective this method will be. And that's simply because you will have more extra watch level points to buy more printer filaments, basically donating your way to max expertise. This is a great method for veteran players or returning players with a high watch level. But if your watch level is low, don't worry because I will be showing you more ways to level up your expertise. So why printer filaments, you may ask? Well, if you take a look over here at the tinkering station, then I'll just scroll down and select the Exero gear set, for instance. Then I'll pull up the donation materials. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will see that printer filaments are a material that you will need the least amount of to donate towards proficiency rank. So it only makes more sense to use printer filaments as the donation material to level up your proficiency. So you will be getting more out of your watch level points and time doing this method considering you have a decent amount of watch level. For example, if your watch level is 2000, you should be getting around 1200 points that you can use towards getting printer filaments. Now keep in mind that for every point you spend, you will be getting 10 printer filaments. Now if you want to further increase the effectiveness of this method, you may use your points to get e-credits, then buy gear or skill mods from any vendor and deconstruct them to get printer filaments. So just make sure you purchase the cheapest mods in the vendor. Doing this will yield more printer filaments than the amount you can buy. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, you will be getting more from your points because if you were to spend one point getting 10,000 e-credits, buying a mod with those credits and deconstructing it will yield 12 printer filaments as opposed to getting 10. In other words, you will be getting an additional two filaments. Yeah, I know, not a big difference, but in the long run, it's more cost effective plus the additional two filaments will add up. However, the downside of this is that it will be more time consuming. So if you have the time, this will be a better option. Now, if you are a newer player or if your watch level is too low for this method to be worth it, then stick around because there are still great ways to level your expertise. With that being said, for this next method, we will be running the countdown mission. And honestly, this mission should be called loot down simply because the amount of loot that drops in countdown is ridiculous especially toward the end, like loot everywhere. So just make sure you have plenty of inventory space before going into countdown. I recommend maxing out the proficiency of your gear first, since this can be done very quickly by equipping a full six piece set of whatever gear you are trying to get proficient. Then as you're clearing NPCs and getting XP from completing countdown, you will be leveling your gear proficiency much faster having a full six piece set. So in case you didn't know, the more pieces of the brand or gear set that you are trying to level up, the more XP you will get. So having a full set will speed things up drastically. So I know that many of you newer players may not have a full six piece set. In this scenario, you may just select the brand that you would like to start working on from the targeted loot. And while you're in countdown, you may just equip the pieces that you need as they are dropping for you. Once you have a full set, you may then either change the targeted loot to something else that you need. It could be ARs, SMGs, or whatever category you need to level next. So let's say I select assault rifles. Now I will be getting assault rifle drops and I can just donate all the assault rifles that I don't need. Just make sure to do this after you complete the countdown run as it wouldn't be fair to your team if they catch you messing around in your menu during the mission. By doing this, you will be in a sense killing two birds with one stone by not only leveling up your expertise from the junk you're donating, but also from the gear you are leveling. Or you can just leave the targeted loot on whatever brand set or gear set you are working on and just donate the extra loot as junk. This will speed up the process of getting all your gear proficient 
Also, just make sure that you remember to extract at the end as this will only boost the amount of XP earned towards your gear proficiency. Another thing is it would be better for you to use your printer filaments to level the exotics. This is what I did and it just makes more sense. This is simply because exotics are a rare drop. So if I were you, I wouldn't waste resources on leveling any of the brand sets or gear sets because this can easily be leveled in countdown. Okay guys, so for this next method, we will be running control points in the open world. I recommend checking your open world map for the locations of specific targeted loot. So let's say we wanna farm for Walker and Harris brand set pieces, for example. We can then spam all of the control points as well as any other activities in the area, such as propaganda broadcasts or public executions. This is another effective way to level up your expertise, and now that you can access your tinkering station in your inventory, it makes things way more convenient by not having to constantly fast travel to the White House to donate junk. Thanks a lot, Massive. Upon completion of any of the control points, you will have a chance to open these orange crates that you may find within the captured settlement. These orange crates, as you may already know, contain loot, and you will also have a chance to get exotic components, which is another very useful resource high in demand. Not to mention the other resources that you will be coming across from small containers and crates throughout the open world. Resources such as titanium, carbon fiber, steel, electronics, etc. All of these resources are very important to have if you want to upgrade and optimize your weapons and gear. Here's a tip. After you capture any control point, you will then be able to speak to the captain of that settlement, which can be identified with a green star symbol. Upon speaking to the captain of the settlement, you will be able to donate materials to them, such as food, water, and components. By doing this, the captain will grant you the ability to see resource containers and crates through walls around the open world for a short period of time. Then you can go around collecting resources while you're farming, making this method even more time efficient. Just make sure that you change the difficulty on your world map to nothing lower than the challenging difficulty. This will ensure that you're getting better loot drops. I recommend having it set to challenging. You may add any directives you like for an increased amount of XP. So there you have it, agents. In conclusion, you can combine any of these three methods to level your expertise, as I would recommend anyway, because running countdown over and over again can become mundane. So switch it up every now and then. Don't burn yourself out if you need more resources for recalibrating your gear, farm level three or higher control points while farming resource crates in the area. So two control points in particular are known to have a ton of resources both within and around the area. And that's these two right here, sinkhole and solar farm. Another great thing about farming control points is that you will be getting weapon mod blueprints. So if you still need the popular 20 round extended mag for assault rifles or anything else, it would be in your best interest to farm control points. If you are not in the mood for countdown or control points, but you have a super high watch level, then start a new character level to 40 and get those watch level points to donate. But overall, for most players, countdown would be the best option as far as leveling up your expertise since you will be getting a high volume of loot drops. You can be donating a ton of loot towards leveling your expertise. This is Prajna, and like always, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. And until next time, take care and peace out.